Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting polynomial equation. We have x to the power 12 equals x minus 1 to the power 12. Because of the 12th power, this could be considered a, you know, duodecic polynomial or duodecic equation, but something is going to change that fact. So we're actually going to have a undecic or unodecic equation because the x to the power 12 when expanded, is going to cancel out. And when you expand it completely and cancel out the x to the power 12, you're going to get something that looks like this. 12x to the power 11 minus 66 x to the power 10 plus 220 x to the 9th minus 495 x to the 8th plus 792 x to the 7th power minus 924 x to the 6th plus 792x to the 5th, it just doesn't fit on one line, minus 495x to the 4th power plus 220x to the 3rd power minus 66x squared plus 12x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, that's a mouthful. And this is going to be a gigantic, crazy equation. Obviously, there is no formula for this and this is not good, this is not good at all. So we're going to do something different. So I'm going to show you a couple different approaches. I don't know if you can call them different methods, but I'll show you some different ideas and hopefully you can go from there. Obviously you're thinking, I know some of you are thinking, Hey, I just forget about the 12 power X equals X minus one X cancels out zero equals negative one. This has no solution. Forget about it. But that's not actually the case. If you look at it from a uh, taking the 12 root, perspective, then you also have to consider the absolute value and you, there's a negative side to it, so on and so forth. But let's go ahead and do this. Uh, one of the things we can do is, obviously, we can go ahead and write this as a difference of two squares. So let's go ahead and put the x minus 1 to the 12th power on the left-hand side and set it equal to 0. So this can be considered x, six, x to the 6th squared minus x minus 1 to the 6th squared equals zero. And that's definitely a difference of two squares, which can be written as a plus b and a minus b, right? And then of course, these are sum of two cubes and difference of two cubes. We can also factor those. So we can kind of write this as x squared cube plus x minus one squared cube. And that's going to be a sum of two cubes. And this could be considered x squared cubed minus x minus one squared cubed. And obviously you could also write it as a difference of two squares and go with the cubes, so on and so forth. There's a lot of different ways to go about it, but this is going to allow you to factor this whole thing uh, pretty much to a good uh, point. So now the, for the sum of the two cubes, you can basically uh, you know, use the formula for a cubed plus b cubed. You can write this as hey, a plus b and then times a squared that's going to be x to the fourth minus ab, which is going to be x squared times x minus one squared plus x minus one to the fourth power. So that's basically going to be zero. That's going to be one of the factors. Let's just set it equal to zero. And then the other factor is going to be the difference of two cubes. So x squared minus this. And then the other factor, this is basically that, is going to be a squared, which is x to the fourth plus ab, which is x squared times x minus 1 squared plus b squared. And that's going to be x minus 1 to the fourth power. And again, this is going to be set equal to 0. Now we're going to get like a cortic from here, which is possible to solve. And this is going to be another cortic, which you can also solve, so on and so forth. But let's go ahead and focus on the other pieces here. This one gives you 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Let's go ahead and take a look at the solutions. And you're going to notice the solutions here are not going to be real. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4ac, which is 4 minus 8. That's going to be a negative 4. And we can write it as actually, maybe I should write it as negative 4 first and then simplify next. Divide by 4. And then this is going to become 2 plus minus 2i divided by 4. And that's going to be 1 plus minus i over 2. So that's going to be two of the roots, and they are complex. As you can see, they are non-real. How about this one? In the second case, uh, x squared is going to cancel out, so we're going to get something different. 
x squared minus x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. When x squared cancels out, we end up with a linear equation, and it has a real solution, obviously, right? Uh, not all linear equations have solutions, but this one does. So x equals 1 half is going to be the real solution. And guess what? It is going to be the only real solution for this equation. Let me tell you why in a little bit, like maybe right now. And now we're going to talk about, uh, you know, different approaches uh, using complex numbers, so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and tell you why this is the only uh, solution. So if you look at the original problem, and again, we're looking first for real solutions, you can basically split it up into two cases. Uh, taking the 12th root of both sides, since 12 is even, that's going to leave you with absolute values. Obviously, you don't need absolute values on both sides because, you know, uh, for obvious reasons, you can basically write this as x equals the absolute value of uh, x minus 1, right? Or you can write it this way, uh, the absolute value of x minus, um, the absolute value of x is equal to x minus 1. Okay, great. So, from here we get two solutions. If x is positive, then we should be getting x equals x minus 1, which doesn't make sense at all because 0 does not equal negative 1. As you can see, this is absurd. But if x is negative, then we should be getting x equals, you know, uh, ne negative x, I should say, negative x equals x minus 1, this should give you 2x equals 1 and x equals 1 half. So anyways, uh, this is not working well. <laughs> so what is going on here? There's a problem. But you can also look at it in a simpler way. So if a to the 12th power is b to the 12th power, then we can safely say that either a is b or a is negative b, right? Okay. So when you have x to the 12th power is x minus 1 to the 12th power, then you can write from here x equals x minus 1 or x equals the opposite of x minus 1. And obviously in this case we get x equals negative x plus 1, 2x equals 1, and x equals 1 half as the only real solution. Obviously this doesn't give us any real solutions. But there are complex solutions because when x to the power 12 canceled out, remember we got a uh, 11th power, so there's supposed to be 11 solutions, and I'm going to show you actually using Wolfram Alpha what those solutions are. But before that, let me go ahead and walk you through uh, a couple solutions which we can easily find, and there's a method for actually finding all solutions. So here's what we're going to do. x to the 12th equals x minus 1 to the power 12. Divide both sides by x minus 1 to the 12th power. And then use a common power, the 12th power is going to be in this case, and set it equal to 1. Great. Now we're going to go with complex solutions. So let's go ahead and write 1 as a complex number. Remember 1, its modulus is 1, and it's on the, I don't think I need a circle. Uh, it's going to be basically 1 unit away from 0. Otherwise, uh, it's represented by the point 1, 0. Its angle is 0 degrees or 2 pi radians. And we can write it as multiples of 2 pi because it can rotate. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to write this as e to the power, and since the modulus is 1, we don't need an r in front of the e. We can basically write this as e to the power 2 and pi i. So even multiples of pi multiplied by i is going to give us the value. So let's go ahead and, you know, use this, um, call this number something. But first of all, I want to take the 12th power of both sides. And with complex numbers in Euler, uh, Euler's exponential form, it's very easy. All you have to do is divide by 12, and that's going to give you n pi over 6 multiplied by i. So by changing the values of n, you're going to be getting basically several different solutions. In this case, n equals 0 through 11 should give you 12 solutions. But there is something to think about. If n is equal to 0, you're going to get x over x minus 1 equals e to the power of 0, which is 1. And as you know from here, we don't get any solutions. Why? Because we're supposed to have 11 solutions, not 12. So let's go ahead and do another one. For example, if n is equal to 1, and by the way, let's call this number z, okay? And if n is equal to 1, then we're going to have the following. z is going to be e to the power pi i over 6. And this can be written as square root of 3 over 2 
plus one half times i. But this is z, and we want to set the z equal to x over x minus 1 and find the x from there. So if x over x minus 1 is z, if you do the math, you're going to notice x is equal to z over z minus 1. So in this case, our um, value x is going to be root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i divided by root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i minus 1. And if you kind of work it out, you're going to get the uh, solution for x. And there's going to be obviously, uh, you know, 11 solutions like this, but 10 of them are going to be complex and one of them is going to be the real solution, which is x equals 1 half. Let me go ahead and show you all the solutions on Wolfram Alpha so you get a better idea. So here's the solutions on Wolfram Alpha. As you can see here, x to the 12 equals x minus 1 to the 12. It's an 11th power. And then real solution is x equals 1 half, as you can see here. And all the other solutions are complex. 1 minus i over 2, 1 plus i over 2, so on and so forth. But there is a total of 11 solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.